I come in the year after Colin Kaepernick comes in, we get we got us all we got all this attention, right? And he's gonna attention because six six quarterback arm can run. So now we get a lot of scouts. So they see him, and then they notice like, oh, they got a tight end, or oh, they got a receiver, or oh, they got some junior linebackers. It was a blessing, bro. It was a blessing how how timing works out. I was there in the right time, right place. God placed me there, the right place, in the right time. I knew I could play, but it's about visibility as well. So having cap there to elevate everybody, we went 13 and one my junior year, finished number 11 in the country. Having him there, it helped us all out. So that there was a. a a two-year stretch where we had the most draft picks in Wolfpack history. I think we had, I think we had like four in one year, then a three the other year. So we had seven in those two years, and we ain't never had that. Good. What's going on, everybody, man? Welcome back to the channel, CDL Cigar and Golf, right here at the beautiful Tappan Ash. Uh, shout out to the owners, Michelle and Melvin Runless. Uh, today, man, we got a dope episode for you guys, man. Uh, 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 in my eyes, a Las Vegas legend, a uh, 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 splendid NFL career. Uh, and he's a Vegas dude, man, and he's really close to me, man, because this is my cousin, man. So I get to interview family right now, man. We got. Mr. Brandon Marshall right here in the building, man. What's good, cuz oh? Yes, sir, man. Man, you already know, man. Uh, 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 a, a splendid NFL career. Pretty much coming coming from the bottom. You know, not highly touted. Um, not, not, not really sought after, but you made people watch you, man. And that's the most important thing. Look, let's get right into it. Take us through your journey. Starting out at Cimarron Memorial High School, man, and and and, uh, and playing over there, man. What was it like playing at Cimarron Memorial High School? Uh, a, rival, a rival of mine, because I went to Cheyenne High School, so we was we was rival. We played for the we played for the duel in the Desert Trophy, man, every year. So tell us about your journey in high school, man. Uh, man, it's it's uh, interesting because I vividly remember my first day walking on the field. Um, and it's crazy, Kenny. I, I, I can tell. Oh, you on the phone? It was crazy. I was, a, I was a freshman. I walked onto the field my very first day of practice, and I said, the road to the NFL starts now. Lily told myself that. What a lot of people don't know is, in eighth grade, in eighth grade, I would go from the second semester of eighth grade. I would go from school. I went to Brindley Middle School. I walked over to Cimarron and told the coach, I said, hey, I'm going to be a freshman year next year. And I started working out with the team. And, and he let me. It's probably, it's probably illegal, but whatever. He let me. <laughs> he let me. He was like, yeah, Coach yeah, Spencer, yeah. man. Uh, rest in peace, uh, Coach yeah. Spencer, man. Uh, legendary, le legendary high school coach in the state of Nevada. Absolutely. So, so my journey in, in high school was one of trying to find out my identity on the football field. So, because Little League, I was O-line, D-line. They, they were trying to figure out quarterback, whatever. So freshman year, I was a quarterback and outside linebacker. Sophomore year, I played running back, and they had me at different spots on defense. I played linebacker. One time they had me at corner and safety. But I was good at running back, though. Uh, my first game, my sophomore year, I had 240 yards rushing. That's crazy. And I had four touchdowns. Then I had a kickoff return for a touchdown. And, and it's funny. I brag on that, even though it was JV, but I, I brag on it. It don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. It, it, you made it happen. A lot of people ain't making it happen on JV, so it really so, don't matter. So, you know, my dog Kenny right here was actually my, te my teammate, my high school teammate. And so, Denver Nuggets in the building. Denver Nuggets, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's good. Uh, he's good. Damn, brother. He's too. He's too. That's funny. That's funny, man. Oh, man. Yeah, that's wild. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so, junior year, you know, just trying to establish myself on the, on the team that he was on. I was an outside linebacker, and I was a backup initially, like, in the summertime. Crazy thing is, 
the starter was a senior. And the coaches was big on like going to um, the UNLV camps, showing up to everything, right? So it was a one, it was a situation where I think his parents was going out of town. Oh, he had to go out of town. I guess he had to go out of town. Coach told him, don't go out of town. He went out of town anyway. When he went out of town, coach said, Brandon, now you're the not a starting outside linebacker. Literally just gave it to me. Wow. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And so my junior year, I did, I did okay. I did decent. Um, I had like four and a half sacks. I did okay. I played running back too. Um, I had some good. It's funny. Every year I played running back, I had like ten yards to carry. Yeah. That's crazy. So, ten yards a pop for y'all don't know. Ten yards to carry is insane. That's dumb. That's crazy. So and, and, <laughs> and fast forward, I don't even know if Kenny know this. Well, I, I'll tell that. But when I got recruited, both schools that offered me told me that they could offer me a running back, but they thought I'd be they thought on defense. They, hey, words to my mom. Wow. I, dead serious. So, funny thing is, right, I'm, I'm a Michigan fan. Uh, Shout out Michigan, man. After my junior year, national champ, 2024. After my junior year, I sent my highlight tape to Michigan. They sent me back at LOL. <laughs> they did, it was like, who is this fool? Who is this dude, man? <laughs> Random. They was like, I, I heard nothing. That didn't deter me from being a fan. I still like Michigan, but it's all good. Straight up. Senior year, that's when I started, that's why I really shine. This is how we get down. I had, uh, nine sacks. I had uh, 10 yards to carry again. My best rushing game, I had three carries, 93 yards, two touchdowns. And after that, you know, I really started to get recruited. I got recruited after my junior year, but my senior year, I said I really got recruited. So I ended up with two offers. Oh, my bad. But I ended up with a. Uh, with two offers, I had one to Colorado State, which which I initially committed to. And Colorado State was the first coach that said, yo, we could, we like you at running back, but we think you better at defense. The next weekend, I went to Reno, and the Reno coach literally said the same thing. This is what he said. He said, look, he said, I'm going to show you this running back right here. He's like, if he can play running back, and get a thousand yards, he said, you can play running back. But everybody thought I was better on defense and it worked out. Yeah, it worked out. That's what's up. So you get to you get to UNR. Um uh, Colin Kaepernick. Let's talk about old OCK, man. What as a as a teammate at UNR, what did Colin Kaepernick and what and what does he still mean to you right now to this day? Man, you know, as a teammate. I'm gonna be so honest with you, man. Cap is probably the only person I know in my in, in the history of my playing days, my teammates from little league to the NFL. He's probably the hardest working guy I've wow. ever met. I can imagine. I can imagine. He's that. the hardest working guy I've ever met. We pledged. We pledged. 2010. Shout out, man. Cap Alpha Sai right here. Cap Alpha Sai. We all in here. And Follow let me tell you up. something. He had a 4.0. Yeah, that's what I do. While he was, while he was pleasuring. That's crazy. I had a one point, brother. Come on now. I couldn't even tell you my GPA when I was <laughs> online, my boy. I'm not even in. Oh. I'm not going to even. No. I'm not going to even do I that. I had a one. It not was gonna even crazy. Do it was some tired nights. We're just going to say that. But I will say this, though. I'm going I'm to I'm give you insight on Cap, man. He's, he's everything you look for in an athlete. And a person, extremely smart, works extremely hard, and he's talented. Yes, sir. When I say he work hard, this is what I mean. We'll do 10 sprints. He's trying to win all 10. You know how some people might, they come out the gate hot, they yeah. win the first one, yeah. maybe they gas out, and they kind of gas out. Gas out. No. Or you got the guys that kind of coast until number 8, 9, 10. Right. 9, 10. Yeah. No, no, no. Then they try to show out. Cap is one through ten. Hundred percent. He wants to beat you in everything. I admire that. Wow, absolutely. I admire that. Because I'm like, yo, this dude is different. Absolutely. As a also, competitor, you have to. as a competitor. Yes, also, sir. what I admire yes, dude, is, or not even, I'm not. I'm just blessed because we all know timing is timing is, is everything. Absolutely. Before I got to Reno, oh my bad. When I first got to Reno, 
I would go to the pro day. I went to the first pro day. I see the seniors, you know, working out, and we probably had one scout, maybe two scouts. Right, right. And I was looking at the history. I'm like, damn, nobody's going to the league from Reno. Right, right. Some dope players came out of there. There's some dope All players. All of a there. sudden, yeah. I come in the year after Colin Kaepernick comes in. We get, we got us all, we got all this attention, right? And he's gonna attention because six six quarterback arm can run. So now we get a lot of scouts. So they see him, and then they notice like, oh, they got a tight end, or they got a receiver, or but they got some junior linebackers. It was a blessing, bro. It was a blessing how how timing works out. I was there in the right time. Right place. God placed me there at the right place at the right time. I knew I could play, but it's about visibility as well. So having Cap there to elevate everybody, we went 13 and 1 my junior year, finished number 11 in the country. Having him there, it helped us all out. So that there was a a, a two year stretch where we had the most draft picks in Wolfpack history. I think we had I think we had like four in one year, then a three the other year. So we had seven in those two years, and we ain't never had that. Right. Unbelievable stuff, man. Look, you're live right here, man. CDL Cigar and Golf right here. You got Mr. Brandon Marshall in the building, Super Bowl champion. When you address him, you address him as Super Bowl champion. You understand me? I should have brought my race. Yeah, man. Oh, man. I brought well, this. Well, I brought just this, know it's I, real. I the ring. Just know it's real, man. Just know it's real, man. Look, um, so fifth round draft pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Take us through your first three years in the league. Now, I know this story because I was there to witness it. But tell the people exactly what it's like being an NFL rookie or somebody that's, you know, drafted drafted in the later rounds, third day guy, and just how hard it is to maintain a roster spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's crazy because, like, anybody that's reached the top of their profession, right, they know it's harder to stay there than it is to get there. That doesn't take away from how hard it is to get there. It's hard to get there, but to stay there is even tougher. I got drafted, and... I almost thought like they picked me. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Not at all. Not so fast. Not so fast. So my rookie, I got cut twice in the same week. Got cut on Friday, then I got cut on the next Thursday. And so for those who don't know, like no, there's 53 roster spots. Yeah. Well, at the time there was, I know it's 53. Yeah, well, well, it's 53 plus now it's 10 on the practice squad. Yeah. Now. Yeah, we used to be seven. So yep. 53 on the roster, on yep. the roster. Yep. And so if you not if you at the bottom of the roster, even if a linebacker or whatever your position is don't get hurt, if somebody else get hurt and you're at the bottom of the roster, you can get cut. So a quarterback, Blaine Gabble got an injury. They had to let me go. A running back, Maurice Jones Drew, got an injury. They had to let me go. They had to find rosters, they had to find space for another running back. They say, you know what? This guy's, I, probably, I was probably number 53 on the roster, to be real. I had to be. And so it was real eye-opening because I had never been necessarily rejected in my sport or something I, like, loved dearly. Absolutely. And to be honest, I loved it with my whole being. Absolutely. You did. Absolutely. So to get cut and to get told, essentially, like, you're not good enough, right. it was tough on me, right? So I got cut once. They said, yo, we're going to bring you back on Monday. On the active roster, I said, okay, cool. So it, it, there was my wake-up call, and I was like, all right, on Monday, I'm, I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta do my thing and practice. And by the way, like, practice is everything in the league. Oh, absolutely. People get cut off practice. No question. If you don't do good, yeah. the eye in the sky. The eye in the sky. They it's taping that. It's not just that. a game. It's they practice. They taping that. Yeah. So I, I was like, all right, I'm back on the roster. Our next practice is Wednesday. I got to go hard. Wednesday come, I go hard. Thursday morning comes. I'm at a, a table 
in with all, like a lot of, you know, my other teammates, some really some DBs, defensive backs. I'm eating, we talking. I get a tap on my shoulder. I look Grim up. Reaper. It was a Reaper. <laughs> he said, B. The Reaper he said, said it. He said, I've been calling your phone. I've been looking for you. My phone was in my locker. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. So I look, I look at him. I look at everybody else. Head down. Everybody eat. Just bring your playbook. Everybody bring your playbook. <laughs> <laughs> now, mind you, just a second ago, we all was laughing and talking. Absolutely. And see that? Everybody was head down. Damn. So, he brought me in, said, you know what? So and so, -and -so got hurt. We got to need a roster spot. And it's, it's interesting because I don't wear my heart on my sleeve, but in that moment, I did. He knew I was upset. Absolutely. Which prompted him to start asking me about, oh, how's your mom doing? I'm like, look, first of all, look. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> you, first of all, you don't even know her. Second of all, you don't even care. You don't bro. care. You, you just, don't care. You just took away my yes, yes, my ability absolutely to provide absolutely. So what you mean? How your absolutely. mom doing? She's doing bad at this moment. Yeah, She's not doing right great. now. Once I tell her this, <laughs> shout out Barbara, man. Shout out Big Cuz, man. <laughs> so after that, I took a drive down ninety five South. Yeah, Florida. Yep. Yep. Took an hour drive. Got to St. Augustine. And I was just thinking the whole time. You, know, you gotta clear your head sometimes. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Now they told me they're gonna bring me back again. Mm -hmm. But this time it hit a little different. Yeah. So then I just remember turning around, turning the car around. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back home. Yeah. And I said, you know what? If I'm gonna go out, because the problem was I was trying to play like the other linebackers. Right. They, right. yeah. they already got one of him. Yeah. They already got yeah. one of you. Yeah. They yeah. brought me in for a reason. Now, that's that doesn't right. mean I'm not coachable. That's right. Right? That's Stay absolutely. coachable, but my thing, I was trying to model my game off, off him. Yeah. And Paul Fitz Leslie is not me. I'm not right. him. No. We're yeah. different. And they paid him a lot of money, by the way. And he was good. They gave, they gave him 40 million. I remember hey, that. They gave him a lot of bread, bro. They gave him a lot of money, bro. They gave that man a lot of money. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. I was like, you know what? I gotta play. I had to click. I said, I gotta play my game. That's it. Flat out. With the coaching, but play my game. So then I came back, and you know, I'll just address real quick the the uh, the mental aspect of it because I truly stopped believing in myself as as I should have. Like, I got insecure in my game. You know what I'm saying? You know, in your profession, right? In your prof if you get insecure in it, man, it's, it's you know what I'm saying? It's a wrap, right? So you got to believe. You got to stay confident. I lost my confidence. I started to ask myself, am I good enough for this game? And I will say this, man. This is one of my favorite moments in my life, or in my football life, I would say. Greg Jones. I don't know if you remember the name. Greg Jones, linebacker from Michigan State. I go back. They brought me back, but this time they brought me back to the practice squad. Interesting enough, I got some interesting stories. Like, it's a lot. Yeah. And, and I know I'm long. Uh, I, know. I know I'm long-winded. But when they brought me back to practice squad, I signed it. I called my agent. I was like, "Hey, you know, I signed the, the papers, whatever." He's like, "Oh, by the way, uh, Denver called. They wanted you." Mm. I said, why, "Why did you tell me?" He said, "Oh, I, I thought because I thought we was gonna stay in Jacksonville." I like, "No, no, you give me that option. Yeah. Let me make that decision. Make, let me make the decision." He took that from me. I'm the client, so I fired him. Anyway, going back to the Greg Jones, so I go to practice the, the next time I go to practice. Greg Jones tells me, he said, he pulls me to the side, he's like, hey, yo, B, as simple as it put, he said, B, I've seen you play, and I don't know why they treat you like this. And let me tell you something, man, that did so much for my confidence at that moment. I'm sure you've had a moment in your life where, like, you just down the dumps. You maybe you didn't believe in yourself. And if somebody came through with words of encouragement, smallest things, and it, and, it, and it brought your spirit up. That right there, I will never forget that moment. That brought me back up and made me realize, no, 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 I am good enough. Because I was questioning myself. And that was like a tough time for me because I'm like, I'm trying to do what I love in a, in a, in a rigorous sport, right? It's, it's high level, it's cutthroat. And I don't believe in myself. That's a recipe for disaster. Oh, man. So shout, shout out to Greg Jones, man. Like, 
So the league is tough, man. It's hard, man. And like, even like, we can relate this part to anything, any profession, anything you do in life as far as like, you know what I'm saying? That mental part of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Believing in yourself, yeah. all of that, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, man, I've I've had a I've had the the luxury of watching the league through you and seeing your journey and actually witnessing it firsthand gave me a total like I already had respect for the game because you just love the game like that. But to see it through you and watch you live it is another level. We talk about levels. That's another level to actually watch it through somebody, through a family member, somebody that you love and care about, and to see them go through that to do something that they absolutely love doing. That that was, it was amazing to watch, bro. I, I, I'll just say that. I'll just say it was amazing to watch, bro. And, and for you to persevere through that and to accomplish what you accomplished, bro, it's a pride thing for me, dude. Proud. Proud, brody. Yes, indeed, man. Look, CDL Cigar and Golf. I'm your host, Donnell Thomas, man. We got inside linebacker retired now, doing other things, doing big things in his retired life. Mr. Brandon Marshall right here. Now, look, moving on from Jacksonville. Let's get to the winning. Let's talk about the winning. Let's talk about the winning. Look, so you get to Denver. You're not on the 53-man roster initially, right? You guys go to the Super Bowl, play the Seattle Seahawks, and get thumped in that Super Bowl. It's an understatement, by the way. That's an understatement. It was, it was a disaster literally from the first snap of the game. Disaster. Talk about your journey getting to Denver and eventually making that 53-man roster and, and being the starting inside linebacker on perhaps, I think it's a top five Super Bowl defense of all time. My personal opinion. Top five, de top five Super Bowl defense of all time. Talk about your journey from practice squad to starting inside linebacker and playing and winning a Super Bowl. Well, what's interesting is my journey so going back to Jacksonville, I got cut for a third time, going to my, sec my second training camp. So year two for me, I got cut a third time. And Denver, Denver called, Oakland Raiders called, and also Jacksonville asked me if I, if I would stay on the practice squad. All three positions was practice squad. So I called one of my boys up that was in Denver. I said, yo, what you think about this? He said, no, nah. he said, bro, you want to come here. And the deciding factor was, not only was I a Bronco fan, that didn't really, that didn't really factor into it. The, the thing was, I remember Denver, remember that Denver had one of me from before. Your sister right there. My agent didn't tell me. <laughs> so Denver wanted me from before, so I'm like, okay. Their interest is, is long standing. You know what I'm saying? I gotta check it out. And they're winning. They got paid minutes. So I go to Denver. Practice squad. So I said, all right, I'm gonna come in here. It's a clean slate for me. I'm gonna bust, I'm gonna bust my ass. I'm gonna go crazy in practice. Literally, first week I get there. Uh, scout team player of the week. Cool. Second week. Scout team player of the week. I kept grinding. So out of I was on practice squad 16 weeks, 16 to 17 weeks. I probably got practice squad player of the week like more than a half of the week. So much that I'm in the weight room one day. I'm in the weight room one day. The weight the weight room coach comes up to me, and Peyton Manning leaves the weight room. The weight room coach comes to me and says, "Hey yo, number number 18 is a fan of you." I'm like, he a fan of me? He said, he said, 18 is a fan of you. And what he's doing is, he's telling coaches about you. And I'm like, that's crazy. That's crazy. So much. Adam Gase 
Adam, Adam Gase. Right he was an offensive coordinator at the time. Every day he would come up to me. He said, I got something for you today. That's how much I was killing the offense. Come on, y'all. Let me tell you so. There was a situation. There was a situation, bro. We was on a red zone. We was on a red zone period. <laughs> we was on a red zone period. Peyton Manning makes a check. He makes a check. I tell the defense, I say, hey, yo, sprint out, sprint out, sprint out. He stops and looks at me. Snap the ball, but he just sprint out. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, that was cold, right, dude? You know what I'm saying? So I called it on the legend. He looked at me crazy, though. He started banging the table for me in the coach's office, like, 54 needs to play. Now they didn't have room for me, okay, but we had a good team on, that on, year. On, All right. Bob, okay, Bob, Bob, Bob Miller gets hurt. Okay, okay, Week 16. You. Week 17, you. they pulled me up. In the meeting, the special teams coach says, look. He said, look, baby. This is your audition. Week 17 in Oakland versus the Raiders. This is your audition for the playoffs. If you do, if you do well enough, We'll put you in for the playoffs. If not, you'll be inactive. So I said, all right. So I went. Oh, she walked in the camera. So I said, all right, you know what? I'm going to do my thing. And I did my thing, and I was active for the playoffs. And it's crazy because he said this, right? Here's the thing. Check this out. A lot of times, the starters get mad at the, office, at the scouting players. The starters get mad. The starters get mad. The scout team players like, yo, you're doing too much. You're going too hard. They never got mad at me. It's like they looked at me with respect. <laughs> the offensive line, they was like, oh, we respect this fool. Probably because they just, maybe they just like pair me up mentally against like the other, the starters like, oh, he's just as good as them. So I started in the divisional game. I forgot how we played. I'm up, I didn't start, my bad. Special teams, I was up, special teams. Special teams against the Patriots in the AFC Championship. Special teams against the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. Even though we got smacked, the next day we get back to Denver, the special teams coach told me, hey, yo, you actually got special teams player of the week. Next week, next year, they had me a nickel package. I started it off. It was like that. Look, look. If y'all heard this man just give his whole spiel, there is zero reason why you give up. Hey, and actually, y'all looking at me? And actually, zero reason why you give up. And actually, my bad. That didn't even cut you off, but check this out. Mind you, remember I was insecure in my game. I, I wasn't believing in myself. When I went to Denver, I had that. Same, it, it still it, it, it stuck with me. Yeah. I get to Denver. We had. Um, we had a, uh, a scrimmage. I remember we was on a bus to the stadium, and I'm literally questioning myself. Like, damn, like, am I good enough? You know what I'm saying? And then I just had to, still at that point, I had to shake out of it. Like, no, no, B, you're good enough. You're, you're good enough, B. You're good enough. A lot of times, it's the mental battle we have with ourselves. We, have, we each have a mental battle with ourselves, right? It's, it's the self-talk. We can't stop the negative thoughts from coming in, but what can we do? We can reinforce them with the positives. We all got negative thoughts come in every day. Every day. Every situation. Every day. Every day. You know what I'm saying? What do you do with that? <coughs> you got to reinforce them with the positive. <coughs> so I did that, and it was beautiful. It helped out. Absolutely, man. That's crazy, bro. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look, CDL Sagorn Golf. Look, y'all getting some gems dropped on y'all right now, tonight, man. CDL Cigar and Golf, I'm your host, Donnell Thomas. I'm here with retired inside linebacker, Denver Broncos, Super Bowl 50 champ, Brandon Marshall, right now. Look, you, you had a wonderful career, played eight years in the league. A lot of people don't get to play eight days in the league. That's funny. 
Let, 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 well, let's, let's think nah, about it. That's real. The average that's real. is three and a half years. Mainstay. That's not even pension. Pension worthy is what? Four years? Four years to even get a pension. The average is three and a half. The average, guys. So you looking at a dude that fulfilled that times two and more. Retired. Tell the people what you're now doing post-career to give back to the Las Vegas community and especially the kids here in the Las Vegas community, man. What are you doing? Let the people know. Before I let the people know about yes. what I'm doing, man, I, I kind of want to talk, uh, if, 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 if you don't mind, man, I kind of want to talk about the transition for me. I'm going to be real, D, man. Like, it's been tough. The transition from... My, I played ball from when I was eight to when I was 30. That's 22 years of football. I told yeah, myself you about to the whole time I'm more man. than football. I always told me, told myself, we talk about that self talk. I told myself that football doesn't define me, and I'm more than the game. Now, I did a lot while I was playing to try to prove that to myself. But when it was time to actually live that, it was hard. It was hard, man. It was hard. It was hard. I ain't gonna lie. I, I felt a lot of unfulfillment. Uh, I, I hate to use this word for myself, but I probably had a little depression in there. You know what I'm saying? Um... Y'all don't even know about the city. I think I had an identity crisis too. You know what I'm saying? We're going to leave that. We're going to leave that. You Just being so young, leaving that profession, and it's like, go do something else. Yes, sir. And then you got to find yourself again. Even though I was rooted in my community. So, like, going back to what I'm doing for the kids, I've, I've, I've had my foundation for since 2016 while I was playing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shout out to Williams Marshall Cares, man. So when I when I got done and I was like, okay, I still got my foundation yeah. and I still rock with that, but it just I just felt empty yeah. a lot. Yeah. I felt empty a lot, man. Yeah. You still wanted to play. I still wanted to play. Yeah. I yeah. still wanted to play, bro. Yeah. I felt empty, man. Yeah. Yeah. And if I'm being real. This is the right here. It was I found myself, let me tell you something. <laughs> I talked to my kids about coping mechanisms. Yes. We got positive, we got negative for coping mechanisms. Absolutely. Absolutely. I had a negative coping mechanism when I got done. I literally found myself in the club five nights in a row. The same club. That's how I know I was going through it. I was in that club Tuesday. <laughs> I was in that club Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, yeah. and then Saturday. And I was, I, on the fifth day, I asked myself, B, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Whatever you're looking for, the app is not in here. Anyway, I chased the game up until 2021. I had to realize, you know, it wasn't, it was over. I had a workout actually with your team, the 49ers. I had a yes, workout sir. with them. Yes, they didn't sign me, unfortunately, but it's yep. all good. Yep. I would have so loved that, but moving on. So it, it took me a long time, man. And I will say this, dude. My daughter helped me. Yes. yes. My daughter helped with my transition a yes, little sir. bit. I love yes, that little girl. Yes, you do. So I have a foundation. She's the boss, man. She's Every the boss. boss. Every the boss. For sure. I got my foundation. <laughs> yeah. I give back to the kids. Yes. In a, in a different, in different arenas. You know, we got career exposure programs. We take kids on college tours. I actually got another branch of my... <coughs> of my foundation where I go into foster kinship the foster, and we go six week classes and we go into this other one called Leaders in Training. We do six week courses about self-development, you know what I'm saying? Believe in yourself, a mental health aspect. And also one thing I'm really excited about, <coughs> I just dropped my cigar. <coughs> what I'm really excited about is uh, I'm opening up a restaurant here soon. I can't wait for that. So check this out, D. I always heard Dude, that. Shout out to my man Rob from Philly in the building right now, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. When it comes about. to like the game. CES convention, man. Sorry. Who when it comes to right 
the mindset you come out of, town, of what you I did. See your I'm coming over. I'm coming it over. translates. So whatever you else want to do. Now, I never really saw Michigan that because building, I just yo. wanted to play ball. <coughs> but I realized that now with this restaurant coming open, I'm starting to get that competitive drive going. The juice is flowing. So I'm opening up a uh, barbecue and Cajun seafood restaurant. It's called Hattie Marie's Texas Barbecue and Cajun Seafood Kitchen. So, look, we got the barbecue, we got the ribs, we got the chicken, we got all that. <coughs> but we got the crab legs, we got the lobster tail, we got the catfish, we got the shrimp. Come on, we gonna have brunch. So that's my that's what's next for me. Look, man, when you talk about a journey and doing things that you really set your mind to do. You're literally the epitome of it. Ups and downs happen, because that's life. But everything you set out to do, from the time you said you stepped on that football field when you were 13 at Cimarron, and said the road to the NFL starts here, that was really the road to life. Not just to the league, but to the rest of your life. And you made that happen, man. That's deep, man. I'm proud of you. I appreciate that. I'm proud and, of you, and man. I kinda, yes, sir. I, I kind of got emotional a little bit just yes, sir. talking about the transition because yes. yes, it was some dark days. It was some, you know, and it's funny because like the average person gonna look at me and be like, what you mean dark days? Mm. You got money, mm. you got a Super Bowl ring, mm -hmm. you got a nice house. Yeah. You, you lived your life to the fullest, you traveled, da da da, but trying to, a lot of football players, a lot of athletes in general, our, our whole identity gets dumped into the sport. When the sport is gone, you literally just sitting there like, what do I do? I'm literally sitting on the couch from 2019, 2020, 21. I'm on the couch like, what do I do? A girl gets pregnant, and I'm like, well, shit, okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, luckily, I got some stability, but like, when she came, it's like, I got something to pour myself into. And then, like, after that, I was like, all right, B, let's find a little motivation here and here. I was trying to find a little motivation. So everything I try to preach to kids, you know what I'm saying? I try to okay, import it back okay. to myself. So Sometimes it's tough, though, because we all fall a little bit. We all kind of, like, sway, back, you know what I'm saying? And um, I, think, I think I'm finally on the other side of um, the tough transition. And, and let me give y'all some numbers real quick. 70% of NFL okay, players... I was at this seminar back. when they, when they told us. It was a... A NFL seminar. It was like it, it was a uh, it was faith based. It was Christian based, right? It was faith based. So there, there's a a, a, stat, a statistic out there, right? So it says 70 percent of NFL players five years after they're done, within five, by the way, within five years, are either broke, addicted, or divorced. Okay. <laughs> Let's just say we understand the broke part. Let's just say oh, yeah. that, right? oh, yeah. We get Contracts that. Contracts not being guaranteed, stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And then also trying to maintain a certain lifestyle that you with yes. not making that money, right? So, tell me what your thoughts are, right? Former athlete, yeah. understanding life. Yeah. You're a life connoisseur. That's how yeah. I say. I think you're a life connoisseur. Absolutely. What's your thoughts on the? Appreciate it, bro. What's your thoughts on the divorce part? Oh wow. And maybe even well, because. The addiction potentially is like, you know, painkillers or I'm trying to cope, whatever, right? What, why do you think 70% of athletes are divorced within five years of being out? Personally, I think it could be twofold. It could be both ends of the spectrum. On the, on the athlete's end, it could be, I literally, my life is literally gone. Everything that I know from the time I was a kid into adulthood is gone. So like you mentioned before, the depression state sets in. You being depressed, now you taking it out on your loved ones. 
That that's just that's that's immediately what popped into my head. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the spouse end. Hey man, you really ain't nothing no more, man. You ain't in the limelight no more. I don't really. Let me go get me somebody younger that's that's still doing it. You old, you old, you you a has been. You a has, you used to do it. And that's and that's the people that married the wrong wife. You married the wrong one. They, they, they married the wrong one. Also, on another end, I also think that like it gets too tough on the athlete with the depression and the transition is too tough. A lot of strain on the marriage. You know what I'm saying? A lot of strain on the marriage. You know what I'm saying? You're not what I you know who I thought you were, right? And maybe and then they was there to ride it out. Yeah. While the money was coming. Right. Oh yeah. When them checks was flowing. They Look, it out. When Goodell was signing them checks, they was good. And then it takes a special one to stick it out with you when you're struggling as a with your mental health and your emotional health, bro. Your, you know what I'm saying? It takes a real one. You know what I'm saying? And check this out, bro. I got a hot, I got a partner. Let me tell you something. I got a partner that played six years in the league. He played six years in the league, bro. He has no money. And now he's divorced, bro. He has no money, bro. And it's so sad. Like, I love him to death. He's it's sad. I told him I was going to, DJ, man. DJ. There was a tryout. We had a tryout. It was going to be some NFL teams there, like Seattle, Baltimore, uh, the, the Raiders, and a couple of teams. I was like, yo, pull up. Let's go. He said, B, man, I ain't got the funds to get out there. So then that's what I said. I said, hey. I said, hey, I'm going to shoot you in the bread. Hey, hey, hey. Just, just, just buy your ticket. Happy this account was overdrawn. You know what I'm saying? And when I say, like, one of the, one of the purest hearted people I've ever met oh, in my life, you sad, bro. Sad. 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 Look, I'm your host, Donnell Thomas, man. CDL Cigar and Golf, Links and Legends. Y'all got so many gems in this episode with my guy, my puzzle, my family, Mr. Brandon Marshall right here, man. Look, throw all your socials out there. The people got to know where to find you and, and, and how to support your foundation, man. Let the people know. Well, first of all, foundation is WMCleadership.com. WMCleadership.com. My social media is at Marsh with two H's, B-M-A-R-S-H-H. On all socials, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna be real, I appreciate you, cause Come on, man. here's the thing, Come on. let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Come man. On, man. I was blessed. First of all, I was blessed with a great mom. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Right? No blessed question great, about I was that. Blessed with a great mother. No question about that. But we all know it takes a village. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So I was blessed with some amazing, like older family members. Older cousins, like, I was blessed with amazing. It's funny because, like, I was born into a good situation with, as far as the family dynamic, Absolutely. as far as. No doubt about it. Even though my dad wasn't there, I had my, my I got a, we got a big, we got, got a big, big family, family. Big family, big family. I got hella cousins, and it's love. A whole heap, though. A whole, oh, man. A whole heap. And it's love, man. So, and let me tell you something, man. You have been somebody I've always loved talking to. I've always made time for. And let me be real with you. Let me be real with you, man. I got a big family. I got a lot of people that's in my ear. A lot of people want my time. A lot of people asking me for this. A lot of people bringing me investment ideas and X, Y, and Z, right? I don't make time for, for everybody. I can't. It doesn't make sense, right? And I got to protect my peace as well. But I've always made time for you, bro, because that love, I can vouch for that. Because <laughs> from the time before this man got drafted, before he got drafted, I got the interview before he got drafted. I got the very first interview before he became an NFL player. So to 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 see you and your maturation from before you even drafted into the National Football League into now seeing you post-career, we talking about a 180 flip. 
A total 180 flip. You you pull, you pulled up to the radio station in the in the OG hatchback. Before he got drafted. And I'm like, being 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 somebody that's that's family and, and watching this dude grow, always knew he was smart. Always knew he was determined. So those those questions, those those questions never entered my mind. I always knew the dude would succeed. I always knew he would he would keep his head down and grind. Always knew that. Because I, I watched him as a kid. So to see where you are now is no surprise to me. No whatsoever. No whatsoever. And I'm proud of you. Proud of you. And we got a we got a jail tour to do here next month. Oh man, look, take look. Being able, being able to 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 be with those kids and to show them uh, the side not to be on. I don't even look at it as a scared straight type of deal. I don't. I look at it as a learning. I look at it as a learning curve, as a learning process. That's how I look at it. When 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 you when you when you're able to to bring those kids into an environment like that and to and to and to show them hey man this is where you don't want to be you want to work here it's cool to work here because we make a lot of money don't be here though. work here don't be here and that's what i look forward to most in in, in instilling in these kids man and to and to be able to do that with, with, with you and your foundation and be able to work so close with you and your foundation and to talk to those kids, it's an honor for me. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. In your profession, doing what you do, yes, right? You see, you, you see a lot, a whole lot. I got a daughter, right? And obviously I, I mentor kids. Yes. So I know it's not one thing, but is there a one or a couple of things you can pinpoint to keep kids on the straight and narrow, is it is it is it keeping them busy? Is it obviously activities? Is it you know what I'm saying? I, I think I, I, I personally believe that sports saved my life. Look, for those that 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 don't know me, I grew up in one of the roughest neighborhoods in Las Vegas, Nevada. I grew up on Donna Street, home of the Crips, and the influence could have been so easy. Because my sister, my sisters grew up with all of them. So they all knew me. But the OGs, as we call them, never let me get involved. Never. I got punched in the chest a lot of times for trying to hang out on the block. No, 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 this ain't true, big dog. Going back to the house. This ain't true. But... Not only that, but like I mentioned, sports saved my life. Baseball in particular, which is my first love, saved my life. And I thank God every day for, you know, you look back on it as, a, as an adult and look back at, at how you came up and the things that you saw and the things that you experienced and you pinpoint certain things. I was able to pinpoint those times me growing up on down the street. I was able to pinpoint that and and just look back like dog. Blessed, blessed is all I can think of at that at that at that juncture. Blessed, bro. That's Seriously. amazing, man. Seriously, that's amazing. And you know, just obviously we can't save everybody, right? But even just thinking about like a certain blueprint to even get them. And sports is amazing, man. Like, and sports. It's really the same way. I believe that. And sports, sports teach you so much. Teach you discipline. Teach you hard work. Teach you perseverance. You get knocked down. You get. You gotta get back up, right? You got a bad play. Okay. Learn from that and move on to the next play. Or you gonna bring that to the next play? Same thing in life. I had a bad day yesterday. I gotta learn from it. Okay. okay. What I do different next day? Salute. <laughs> Absolutely. Look, man. Look, y'all know we can talk all day because I know this man in time life story. But look, I want to thank everybody for chiming in this week, man. CDL Cigar and Golf. 
Links and Legends sit down cigar interview. I'm here with the Vegas legend. My cousin, Mr. Brandon Marshall, man. I appreciate you falling through for me, big dog. One love, man. Hey guys, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, man. CDL Cigar and Golf. Salute.